So guess who they're gonna blame this on? You already know. You think I was kidding all this time? Do you think that I made all these things up? on the subject throughout the day not so much as a single tweet about the situation in iraq but his administration's reaction to the ongoing unrest and the threat has spoken loudly and with unmistakable clarity as soon as we saw there was a potential for problem they got in and there was no problem whatsoever the contrast could not have been more stark glitz and glitter on the one hand the happy new year grit and gumption on the other yet there were still surprising parallels between the president's new year's eve gala and the deployment of additional U.S. Marines to the embassy in Baghdad. In each instance, a projection of calm amid simmering unrest half a world away. Well, I think it's been handled very well. The Marines came in. We had some uh, great warriors come in and do a fantastic job, and they were there instantaneously as soon as we heard this will not be a Benghazi. Well, there is a stark difference between the facilities in Baghdad and Benghazi, the former is a $750 million fortified edifice. The president's point about a quick response underscores both the threat to U.S. personnel and property and the strains of history which has seen numerous otherwise peaceful embassy days and nights devolve into chaos and carnage. With that fact as a stark underpinning, the president, who has accused Tehran of being fully responsible for the embassy assault, told about you. 750 soldiers deployed to the Middle East, as about 3,000 more prepare for possible deployment in the next several days, including, said Defense Secretary Mark Esper, the immediate deployment of the 82nd Airborne, an appropriate and precautionary action, he wrote All in a right. statement, taken in response to increased threat levels against U.S. personnel and facilities. We have told the Iranian regime countless times, do not confuse President Trump's strategic patience with weakness. Um, and unfortunately, the regime has done that, which is why that you saw the strikes over the weekend. While criticism of the president's decisions has been relatively muted, some Democrats place blame for the unrest in Iraq squarely on his shoulders. Connecticut Democrat Chris Murphy tweeted. All right, look. I'm tired of saying it, and we're about to have the last war. So if you're not a believer in Christ, then become one, because before you know it, it may be too late, but I'm telling you, this is the Gog and Magog war. It's coming. It's on the doorstep. What else do you need? What other signs? What other portents? What else do you need? Quite frankly, I'm tired of talking about it. Believe it or not, but there's the proof right there. I mean, you know, whatever. Whatever.